Now, Hunter, I told you this would not be easy. Believe me, I did not shoot your partner. Oh, I haven't even started yet, Jack. Do they know who did it? <laughs> I think I did it. You gotta be kidding. All right, step out of your car, hands raised. You understand these rights? Yes, I do. What's the charge? Homicide. If I were you, I'd get an attorney. How was she? Not good, Charlie. She's scared to death. Frankly, so am I. And now, scenes from part one of Hot Pursuit. She was picked up uh, with two other girls, Susan Dumont, alias Susie Q, and Mary Lakowski, alias Vicky Lake. I'm at a phone booth. I found Susie. Well, that's very fast work, McCall. Where'd you find her? I don't really have time to go into it, but get a load of this. She and Anita Fargo were working for a guy who runs RVs from here to San Francisco, servicing truckers and traveling salesmen. Shot my partner, Dee Dee McCall. She's in the hospital, paralyzed from the neck down. Look, come on, Vicky. I don't know if you know this or not, but your girlfriends, Anita Fargo and Susie Q, well, they're dead. You could be next. Now, come on, talk to me. I'm very sorry about your motor home. I thoroughly intend to pay for it. It's a small debt. Oh, really? Hi. Look, honey, I don't own this rig. So, uh, since it's not a big dent, let's forget about it, okay? Accidents happen. I'm Laura Decker. I saw you today at Big Jack's. So? Well, I heard what you said to him. I took this stuff from his office. I want to help you get him. These are his in-house originals. <laughs> they haven't been doctored yet by his CPA. You mean the guy in Jack's office with bad shoes? <laughs> yeah, Roger Adler. Unless you're here to arrest me, I want you out of my office. You're a pimp, and you're a murderer, Jack. You paid some punk to shoot my partner, now I'm gonna get you. What about Big Jack's wife, Louise? Now, she's on record as the owner of one of his businesses. Probably a tax scam. Louise is a real cheap-looking bimbo who can't balance her checkbook. You cut off his supply, and he's had it. Where does the supply come from? You know, he may not see me tomorrow. I gotta go down to San Diego. Why San Diego? Well, I'll talk to you about that when I get back. How's it going? I can't feel anything yet, you know. Well, the doctor said it'd take about a week for all the swelling to clear up. Then what? L56. I'm in pursuit of an ADW suspect driving a late model red sedan. License plate number one, Peter Charlie, Echo 421. I need immediate backup at Mason Drive and Spring Street. L56 out.
take care of yourself. Yeah. Hiya, Charlie. So, what's the damage? Total. I'm talking about you. I know what happened to the car. Oh, just a little bruised ribs is all. What's happening? No concussion? No, the doctor checked my head and found nothing. So you're still planning to drive to San Diego? Yeah, well, unless something else shows up here. Well, we got a report on Adler, that CPA. Yeah? He was accused of embezzlement a couple of years ago. The company dropped the charges, but they fired him. That's when he went to work for Big Jack. Jack's kind of guy, huh? And that uh, red sedan that blindsided you? Yeah. Stolen. And no ID report on the driver either. Great. Well, what's the good news? The good news? I told Joe to give you a brand new car. You are going to be so pleased with this, Hunter. I can't wait to show it to you. Look, ain't you a beauty, huh? Take a look at that. Yeah. Yep. She's turbocharged. 350 horsepower, huh? She can go from zero to 60 in 6.4 seconds. Yeah, go ahead. Get, get to the top end. Come on. Come on. 845 miles an hour. <laughs> you son of a gun. I'm going to tell you, though, it's going to seem like that, and that's with the air conditioning on. What, uh, what color would you say this is, Joe? Call it morning mint. Uh -huh. What color is that one over there? It's green, like your old car. Is there anything wrong with that car over there? The engine's wrong. Why? I want you to take this motor here out of the morning mint yeah. and put it in that car over there. And when you do, I want you to give me a call at the hospital. That's where I'll be. OK. Thanks, Joe. Going to San Diego? Oh, I'm going. I just got detained by some bad car trouble. You know how that goes. Yeah. The doctor tells me that uh, you're doing so well that they're going to operate and take the bullet out in a couple of days. You're going to be here? Yeah, I'll be here. Thanks. Okay, I guess I got everything here. Now remember. If the phone rings, don't answer it. Got it. Oh, and uh, good luck down there. Just remember, Kirkland and Jack are like this. Like that. Yeah. Got it. Take in frozen and canned. Oh, boy. Gee, what is your problem anyway? What do you think? She's in there faking it with him? Give me my coat back. <laughs> I was only Give kidding. Give me the coat back. I was only kidding. You know what? Yeah, you want that pizza now, right? Yes, I do. <laughs> Jack Hemmings moves RVs, my RVs, faster than any distributor in the country. You gotta be out of your mind coming to me with this crap. Take a look at this. That's me and Jack hunting pheasant at the High Lake Club. The one behind me? That's me, Jack, and my family, Cabo San Lucas, marlin fishing. That's me and Jack in Maui. And that one there is the two of us with the governor playing golf in Palm Springs. So, if Jack's doing something illegal, that's your problem. 
You're trying to get me to do your job for you? What are you so damned afraid of, Mr. Kirkland? I'm sure not afraid of some low-rent cop from Los Angeles. Thanks for the support. Hello? Charlie Hunter. Where are you? Well, I'm down in a motel in El Mirage. So how'd it go today? Not good. Kirkland and Big Jack seem joined at the hip. So what are you still doing there? I don't know. I seem to make Kirkland nervous. Maybe I'll make a stupid mistake. Like what? I don't know. You talked to McCall? Yeah, talked to her about, oh, 15, 20 minutes or so ago. How was she? Not good, Charlie. She's scared to death. Frankly, so am I. I tell you, I don't think I want to do this job without her. Look, she's tough. She'll make it. I should be up there with her right now. Now, stick to Kirkland. See what you can find out. I I'll go to the hospital myself. I'll, I'll tell her you're thinking about her. Thanks. I appreciate that. OK, I'll talk to you later. Yeah, I'll see you.
Mira, mister, a house is a house. Pues we don't know what goes inside every house in the city. I understand that. Can I please speak with your superior? Okay. Go, Jack. Sí, Capitán, tengo un gringo aquí que dice que es una casa misteriosa. Pues sí, Capitán. Está bien. Follow me. Muy bueno. Muchas gracias, Centro. Captain, how are you? Hello, Sergeant. I understand you have a problem. Tell me, how can I help you? Yeah, the house at 516 Paloma. I need to know what goes on there. Please, come sit down. Thank you. May I ask you a question, Sergeant? Sure. Why do you want to know this, and what do you intend to do with this information that I may or may not give you? Well, a man that's involved in the murder case I'm working on went into that house this evening. What is this man's name? Kirkland. I sat out in front of the house for about a half hour. I watched two, three men go in. A little bit later, a couple men came out. One of the men that went in looked to be about uh, 15 years of age. It would appear that you can draw your own conclusions, no? Well, I, I'm sure I can, but uh, conclusions aren't going to help me, Captain. I need some facts. And if I can't help you? Look, Captain, what you do here in your city is your business. It's none of mine. My only concern is Kirkland. OK, Sergeant. I'll answer your question. We've had that house under surveillance for many weeks, and we're planning to shut it down soon, because it is not only a house of prostitution, it is a house of homosexual prostitution. Could you uh, pull into the inspection area, please? Nothing wrong? Pull up right over there, please. Your personal preference is none of my business, Mr. Kirkland. However, Captain Perez did tell me what goes on at 516 Paloma. John Hemming shot one of the closest friends I have in the entire world. And you're gonna help me nail him. Aren't ya? Charlie Kirkland pulled Big Jack's franchise. I'm gonna put Big Jack on a 24-hour surveillance. You got it. See ya. Hunter, I got a couple of messages for you. Hold on, Ambrose. Wayne Hunter, do me a favor. Find out if Louise Hemmings is back from New York City or not. Now, don't let on I'm looking for her. Okay? I'll be at my desk. Hey, one of these messages is from a John Hemmings. He says it's urgent. It's about the case you're working on. Uh, he wants you to see him at his house right away. Thank you. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. I got another one from Sporty James. He's waiting for you at this phone booth. Oh, yeah. Great. Let's talk to him. Excuse me, don't you have your own phone? I like this phone, Ambrose. Hello. Sporty Hunter, what do you got on Vicky Lake? Now, Hunter, I told you this would not be easy. Vicky Lake left town. She went to Phoenix. Sporty, this girl is the key to this entire case. We'll find her. Don't worry about a thing. Good, call me. As soon as you get something, you make sure you call me. You got it? OK. Nice phone. Yeah, you owe me four bits. Yes. Yeah, Sergeant Hunter to see Big Jack Hemmings. Hemming's upstairs, first door to the right. Thanks a million. Come in. 
I mean, do you think you you think you pulled pulled it off? Is that it? Oh, I haven't even started yet, Jack. Now, let me tell you something. I just think you've been wasting a lot of time. I mean, you're the same place you were when you came into my office, and that's nowhere. I mean, yeah, I lose. You ruin my business. You lose, too. All the time you waste it. Big deal. That's it? You brought me down here to tell me that? No, no, no. No, no. No. I brought you down here to tell you the truth. Listen to me. I did not shoot your partner. I never shot anybody. I mean, the girls in the RVs, okay, I did that. I admit to that. But I never shot anybody, ever. Now, whoever shot your partner is still out there someplace. I don't know where the hell the person is. I didn't do it. You could have told me this over the phone, Jack. You're wasting my time. You wouldn't have believed me on the phone. I brought you down here so you could look in my face and see that I'm telling you the straight truth. I mean, you ruined my business. Believe me, I did not shoot your partner, period. Well, if you didn't, then who did? Oh, for God's sake, don't you think I'd tell you if I knew? Yeah, maybe. Okay, Jack. Okay. Louise, what the hell? I just talked to you in New York. No, Jack. You just thought I was a New Yorker. All right, step out of your car, hands raised. Now turn around and put your hands on top of the car. I'm with Metro PD. Yeah, we know you're an L.A. cop. This is Beverly Hills. You know the drill. Hands at your back. You can turn around now. Lieutenant Sam Richfield, Beverly Hills Homicide. You have the right to remain silent. If you give up that right, anything you say may be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to have an attorney present. If you cannot afford one, one will be appointed to you. You understand these rights? Yes, I do. What's the charge? Homicide. Homicide? Who's been killed? John Arthur Hemmings. You want me to call Ed Miller? He's their deputy chief? Just a second. Why don't you take him shopping on Odeo Drive? Thank you. Boy, this Lieutenant Richfield here is absolutely positive I killed Hemmings. I can't believe it. Anyway, call Mike Snow for me. Mike Snow? Are you crazy? Just do it, Charlie. He's perfect for this situation. Yeah, I guess you're right. And he'll laugh when you call, but call him. After I call Ed Miller, he'll make sure that you're treated like a fellow officer. Appreciate it, Charlie. I'll be here. Now, two witnesses, Mr. Roger Adler and Mr. Randolph Taylor, were in the rear of the house when they heard the shot. Mr. Adler was the deceased accountant, and Mr. Taylor, as we know, was one of the most highly respected attorneys in this city, a former president of the California Bar. When these witnesses got to the study, Sergeant Hunter was not there, even though he had gone up to the study only five minutes earlier. Sergeant Hunter wrote out for me exactly what was said by him and by Mr. Hemmings verbatim. I timed it. Their conversation lasted less than two minutes. Now, that leaves three minutes unaccounted for. After Mr. Hemmings was found, six minutes elapsed before Sergeant Hunter was arrested in the 700 block of Sherbrook Drive. That seems accurate, but very peculiar. Mr. Adler finds his employer dead. A gun in his hand, gunshot wound to the temple. 
yet instantly calls the police and asks him to arrest Sergeant Hunter for murder. Never even questions suicide. Hadn't Hemmings just been informed he faced bankruptcy and possible charges of bank fraud? A paraffin test was conducted on Mr. Hemmings' right hand. It was negative, indicating that he was not holding the gun when it was fired. Matter of fact, and the powder burns also indicate that that gun was over two feet from the victim's head when it was fired. This was not a suicide, Mr. Snow. This was a murder. I ordered paraffin tests to Sergeant Hunter's right hand. In fact, both of his hands. Oh, I see Lieutenant Richfield didn't tell you. Well, I'm sorry about that. As with Mr. Hemmings, the tests were negative so that to quote you, Ms. Wyman, he was not holding the gun when it was fired. There's a bathroom in the foyer of the Hemmings' house. Hunter could have, and I'm damn sure he did, wash his hands before leaving. Are you out of your mind? You mean to tell me you actually think I went downstairs and washed my hands before I left? You're an experienced detective. You know about powder stains on your hand and what to do about it. Thank you, Lieutenant. I was about to make that point. Sergeant Hunter is indeed an experienced, knowledgeable detective who knows about such things. And if he wanted to fake a suicide, he'd have put the barrel of the gun against the victim's head. Am I going too fast for you? I think that Mr. Hemmings jerked away from the killer just as the gun was fired. Well, even a smart detective couldn't do anything to fix that after the fact. Ms. Wyman, are you going to file a charge against my client? We certainly are. Sergeant Hunter once angrily accused Mr. Hemmings of shooting his partner, and he then threatened to nail him. That gives us motive and premeditation. In other words, murder one. Well, unless you'd like to offer us a lesser plea. I assume that's why you asked for this meeting. No, Ms. Wyman. I just wanted to know if you had anything we should be concerned about. You don't. Now, here's some advice. I wouldn't ask the district attorney to let you file even a misdemeanor charge against my client because your promising career as a deputy DA would come to a thudding halt. And now, since it's almost four in the morning, I'm leaving. I'll be with my client. Please don't take too long coming to a decision. Hunter's still in custody. See, he doesn't leave the building. We can't file a charge. You'll have to go back to the drawing board. The man is guilty. What are you afraid of? Your job? The answer is yes, Lieutenant. I am. Go back to work. You can always arrest him again. So worried about you. Really? Well, it has been an interesting day for everybody concerned, Laura. Big Jack is dead. What? Yeah. What happened? Well, it was made to look like a suicide, but it wasn't. It was, uh, it was murder. Do they know who did it? <laughs> I think I did it. Yeah. Anyway. My call gets operated on in about an hour. I'm gonna go make some coffee. The DA doesn't think they have a case yet, but that doesn't mean they won't arrest me tomorrow. Well, what has this Lieutenant Richfield got against you? Oh, I guess he hates all the cops. <laughs> Did you believe, Jack, that he didn't have anything to do with what happened to your partner and the others? Yeah. And who could it be? Roger Adler? He was with Randolph Taylor when the shot was fired. Did you ever meet Louise Hemmings? Could be her, you know. Well, sure. I told you, remember? She's a bimbo. Oh, Complete yeah. airhead. Right. Well, <clears throat> with Jack dead, there goes my only excuse for staying here with you. <laughs> Guess I'll just pick up where I left off, go to Paris. But I will stay if you think there's any chance you might need me. No, no, don't stay here on account of me. I think everything's all taken care of. Thanks, anyway. OK. While you're at the hospital, I'm going to go to my apartment and pack. You will take me to the airport, won't you? Sure. Uh, what if you can't get on a direct flight to Paris? Uh, I'll fly to New York. I can make the Paris arrangements from there. Good, OK. Where's my coat? Oh, behind you. Oh, OK. I'll call you from the hospital. OK. See ya. <laughs>
Don't say a word. Go to the apartment. I will meet you in two hours. As far as you go, Sergeant. I'll be waiting right out here when you get through. Thanks, big guy. Physical therapist to five minutes, please. Scared. They, they didn't buy the suicide thing. Something about the, the powder burns proving that the gun wasn't close enough to Jack's head. And I've got nothing to worry about. Nobody saw you come in. Nobody saw you leave. Well, you're kidding yourself if you think Hunter's gonna lay down for this. He's a cop. And what about Vicky? Has Louis found her yet? Well, tracked her to uh, Phoenix. Missed her by a couple of hours. He says she's back in L.A. Go find her. Oh. You better. And this time, he better do it right. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you go to New York now? I'll stay here till everything's safe. I'll meet you in a couple of days. Give me three days. OK? OK. I'll see you in New York in three days. Yes, this is Louise Hemmings. I'd like to confirm my reservation for Zurich, Switzerland, on flight 480 from New York tomorrow morning. Sergeant Hunter. Yes. She did fine, and she'll recover fully. Thank God. It'll take some time, but uh, she'll be good as new. Thank you very much. Can I see her? No, she'll be in recovery an hour or so, then she'll sleep for the rest of the day. Beautiful. Tomorrow will be fine. Anytime tomorrow in the morning? Or... Oh, sure. Great. I'll be there. <sighs> yeah. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. You always drive with one eye in the rearview mirror? Oh, yeah. Especially when we're being followed. Who do you think they could be? Oh, a couple of Ridfield's boys making sure I don't leave the country. Your attention, please. Passengers on flight 690. Where are you Where, can you start them? Yeah, it's them, all right. Look, you better get going. Have a good flight. Thanks for the help, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks. Good luck. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Have a good flight. Thanks. Yeah. Arriving passenger Sean Lynch. Please go to the white courtesy phone, please. You know, perhaps we should work together on this case. Yeah, sure. We can start right now. 
And you can make a full confession as to why you killed John Arthur Hemmings. On second thought, I've already got a partner. Excuse me. Uh, doesn't this guy ever say anything? L-56, go ahead. Mr. James Arnold, or maybe it was Arnold James called and said it was urgent to get you this message. What's the message? He wanted you to know he finally found Vicki Lake. She's staying with her grandmother. The address is 753 Hobart Street. 753 Hobart, got it. Thank you, L-56. This is L-56. I'm requesting an immediate backup at 753 Hobart Street. L-56 out. Stop right there, police! Get out of the car. Come on. Everything is all right. Now, you called my office and left an urgent message. You want to talk to me about Big Jack Hemmings? What are you talking about? I don't know anything about him. I called you about Anita Fargo. She was killed because she was trying to um, blackmail those people that are running the RV operation. Yeah, and who are they? I don't know. Anita had a big mouth, but she was a real hustler. Um, she told me that she followed Flo one day to that big black car that I was telling you about. Yeah. And she said that the car drove to this huge white mansion in Beverly Hills. And then this woman got out and went inside. Did Anita say what this woman looked like? Only that she was um, young, kind of nice looking. I, uh, I kind of got the impression that she was ladylike. You know, real classy. Well, how do you know Anita was blackmailing these people? Well, because she told me and Susie that she was going to. Okay, and then a week later, she's dead. And then someone is trying to take out me and Susie, too. And that's when I started running. I'm Sergeant Hunter. This is Vicki Lake. Now, she's helping us on a murder case. I want her and her family put on a protective custody, you understand? <clears throat> yes, sir. Should I call an ambulance? No, I don't think we're going to need one. Vicki, I'll talk to you later. Lieutenant Richfield, homicide. Hunter, I want to be on the next trans global flight to New York City. I just thought you'd like to know that. Lieutenant, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to telex a photograph of Louise Hemmings to New York City. For me. Why should I do that? Well, look, will you just do that for me? I need your help on this case, OK? Your attention, please. 
Flight 380, non-stop Imperial service from Los Angeles is now arriving at Kennedy International, East Concourse, Gate 64. Flight 380 from Los Angeles, now arriving at Gate 64. Your attention, please. First class passengers on Flight 480 to Zurich may now begin boarding through Gate 12. This is Louise Hemmings. Hi, Louise. You remember Lieutenant Ridgefield, don't you? You're under arrest for the murder of your husband, John Arthur Hemmings. So Louise planned the whole thing. Yeah. Even down to cutting Adler out of his share. That's a smart lady. Well, maybe. A little bit lower. She's so smart, how come she blew that suicide? Well... That's something even she couldn't control. You see, Big Jack pulled his head away just as she pulled the trigger on it. Huh. You did pretty good, you know. Yeah. I mean, you solved this case all by yourself. Yes, I did. Kind of worries me. Yeah, what do you mean, worries you? Well, does this mean you... you think you can do without me now? Well, I'll wait just a second. The things I did in this case... I was forced to do because of your situation here in bed. Like what? Well, let's just forget about it. What, I have to read about it in the report? <laughs> it's not in the report. <laughs> that bad? Well, yeah, it is bad. Come on. Does that mean you still need me? Oh, I need you like a dog needs a bone. What? <laughs> like a dog needs a bone? That's not a very flattering analogy. Well, I could have said fleas. Thank <laughs> you.